we go. Are we live? We are. Okay, we're back from business. It's time for that monumental first ever in Zelda E. Yes. <laughs> Which I even put on the chairs for people in attendance. It is? WWE's first ever all women's pay per view. Huh. <clears throat> all right. On to business. So, we've literally only just found this out. We had a dark match before the show even went on air. And it was for the NXT UK Women's Championship. Terrible. Rhea Ripley defending against Dakota Kai. Could you not have found 10 minutes on the main show for that? They could have done. It being a dark match, that's, that's insulting. So all we know is Rhea Ripley defended successfully. And that, that's all we know. We don't know how, when, and why. <laughs> so on to the main show. And we opened up, predictably, with the women's tag team match. Yeah. Trish Strass and Lita facing off against Mickey James and Alicia Fox with Alexa Bliss. <laughs> oh, yeah, so she, she's not well enough to wrestle, but she can be a ringside. Yeah, and she was in like an Alice in Wonderland themed attire. Yeah, apparently there were meanings behind all their attires. But Trish Stratus was blatantly Wonder Woman. Right, well, what to say about this one? <laughs> it wasn't terrible. No, I mean, you, you can only work with what you're given, and working with Alicia Fox is pretty much a death sentence. Now, did you notice them? Two blatant botches Alicia Fox did in this match. No, because I was, wasn't really paying attention to it. <laughs> well, when she first entered the match, Lita flipped her over the ropes from the outside. And rather than land on her back, she landed on her ass. <laughs> Brilliant. And then, um, I think it was about three quarters of the way through the match. Dink. It was Trisha Dunn Strass faction to Mickey James. <laughs> and Alicia Fox was meant to get in the ring and break up the pin. And the refs literally gone down for the three, stopped for like a whole second, and then Alicia Fox has come along and shoved Trish. Oh man. So yeah. Yeah, one thing I've got to take exception with, Alicia Fox, now I'm, this is aimed at you, Maggle, she is not a pioneer in the women's evolution. And, and she is definitely not Hall of Fame worthy. No. Some of that commentary was dreadful. I'm like, the other three, fair enough. Mm. Alicia Fox is kind of like the female version of JTG. Ooh. We don't know why she still has a job. <laughs> <laughs> so, but like we said in our predictions, as soon as Alicia Fox got announced to be Alexa's replacement in this match, we knew straight away where this was going. Yep. So then, I think it ended with was it Trish hitting hitting the um, her own modification of a super kick, and then Leah did a moonsault off the top rope. That was that was how it ended. And shock horror, the legends won. <laughs> wow, I didn't see that one coming. Right, so next we had <coughs> the 20 woman battle royale for a future title shot. And oh my god, did every single person have to have an entrance? It kills five, ten minutes. It killed like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no, there were some interesting people in this match. I mean, Tori Wilson. Mm. So, let's run through with you the entrance. You had 
the Iconics, who didn't last very long at all. <laughs> no, they were the first ones out. <laughs> Molly Holly, Kelly Kelly, Tori Wilson, Sonia Deville, Lundra Blaze, one half of your favourite love partnership. Oh, God. Rick and Ellis. Ugh. Lana, Mandy Rose, Dana Brooke, this is Dead Man herself, Michelle McCall. Yeah, she was there. Who shockingly didn't eliminate half of the Battle Royal she, straight away. She didn't eliminate anyone. <laughs> Naomi, Carmella, Ivory, Oscar, Tamina, Selena Vega, and Ember Moon. Mm. Now, as we noted, before we get to the end of the match, I completely forgot that Zelina Vega was even in that battle royal. <laughs> well, yeah, because she went like under the ropes pretty yeah. early. And then just disappeared for like three quarters of the match. Yeah, and just hid. <laughs> I think you were supposed to forget she was in the match. Mm. Well, no, and it might just be because like they put the title shot on the line, but every time one of those old timers was thrown over the top rope and they hung on, mm-hmm. you knew they were going out. Yeah. Although, to be honest, surprisingly, the longest standing legend that was in the match was Ivory. Yeah, that was surprising. But to be honest, I was okay with that. Hmm? I I was just praying it didn't come down to like Michelle McCall and Nia Jax. So I was like, oh my god, <sighs> Michelle's going over, lads. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, no, I think that they listened to the Royal Rumble criticism. Mm. <laughs> she didn't eliminate anyone. No, and um, well, you had a you had a bit of a working partnership to start off with between uh, Tamina and Nia Jax. Yeah, because they, they are related. <laughs> You're not supposed to know that. Breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> we ain't Deadpool here. We can't pull that kind of stuff. Damn it! I'd love to be Wade Wilson. No. <laughs> uh, I believe is it the final four was technically Zelina Vega. I think it was. Was it the Ember Moon yep. and Tamina yep. and Nia Jax? Yeah. So I believe Ember Moon was first to go. No, she was the last to go. Oh. Um, Tamina was the first to go. Then, I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember how Zelina came back into the match. Oh, uh, well, they, Ember Moon and Nia were doing that whole she's dragging her over the top rope thing. Mm. And then Zelina ran into the ring and tried to eliminate both of them. And it didn't work. Didn't work. Yeah. And Nia Jax quickly got up, picked her up over the top, just like launched her. Oh, yeah, didn't she like, literally chuck her into Tamina? Yeah. And it looked pretty bad as well because they, they kind of headbutted each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I looked at it and I was like, well, those two are knocked out. <laughs> well, all I can say on this match is the two we predicted who were going to win it, it come down to them two. Yeah, <laughs> it did. But you got the win on this. One. Yes. <laughs> to me, uh, no, not to me. No. <laughs> no. Nia Jax, hidden. That family traded some Owen drop. Oh, man. And then I think she just literally picked Ember up and just chucked her out of the ring. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Yeah, so Nia Jax gets her future shot at the Raw Women's Championship. Which ain't going to be until TLC. Uh, so, the next match we had... The final of the May Young Classic. Mm. It was Tony Storm facing the facing off against Io Shirai. I fairly enjoyed this match. Considering I don't know an awful lot about Io Shirai, I was I quite like this match. Yeah, I mean oh Christ, I'm gonna put it out there, but this was probably my favourite match of the night. Oh, there you go. Simply because there was no gimmicks, it was just two people. Wrestling it out, straight singles, yeah. best woman wins. Yeah. 
There was yeah. one particular spot I liked where they were fighting on the hardest part of the ring. Oh. And Storm hit her with a German suplex on the hardest part of the ring. Yeah, I, I, I cringed at that moment. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, I swore. I was like, oh my god. Swear, I swear. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Oh, dear. Oh, good match. Yeah, so I believe it ended with uh, Tony Storm hitting a sit down power bomb. Yeah. I, sure. oh. I, can't, I, can't, I can't remember what it's called now. It's like Storm Driver or something like that. It sort of reminds you of the Tyler Driver. Yeah, yeah. They, they kind of hit it the exact same way. Mm. And uh, Tony Storm won the May Young Classic. Yep. And then they did the whole celebratory thing with the flowers and the, oh, well done. Yeah, with uh, Triple H and yeah. Stephanie and, of course, um, the assistant head trainer of the performance centre. I apologise here, I can't ever remember her surname, but it's Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they did the whole presenting trophy, giving them flowers and that. Yeah, that was good. Oh god! Right, get ready. Rant alert. Okay, let's get this one over with. Now we're getting ready for the hot garbage, which was this six women's tag match between yeah. the Boss and Hug Connection and Natalia. They were facing off against the Riot Squad. Right. Oh boy. Right, I'm just going to put it out there. I didn't like this at all. No. Oh. It was awful. It was just one big giant mess. I mean, no, nothing against Natalia and Sasha and Bailey, but it was awful. Yeah, I had real trouble keeping up with the, this one. The referee. Didn't have a clue what was going on. No, he really did. I mean, at one point, I'm pretty sure it was Ruby Riot was the legal person in the match, and then they did like a double T move, and then Liv Morgan's making the pinfall. Yeah. All right, and I got to highlight one particular botch in this match. Mm-hmm. It could be either of them's fault, but you had the riot squad outside the ring. Yeah. Sasha Banks went to do the flip over the top rope. Yeah. And I'm not sure whether she jumped too early or they caught her a bit late. Yeah. But she sort of bounced off, like, the bottom part. Yeah. And sort of flopped into it. Mm. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> then, then they caught her, and it was like, uh, okay, we got to do something here, because this has gone wrong. Yeah. It was just an absolute mess. Nobody knew what was going on at all. And I swear, even when the good team picked up the victory, I swear not not even the legal person picked up, done the pinfall in that either. It was Natalia, wasn't it? Or am I wrong? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she put her in the sharpshoot, yeah. didn't she? Yeah. Sharpshooted someone or other. I think it might have been Liv Morgan. Yeah. Sounds right. Yeah. So, yeah, all awful. Well, that's 13 minutes. I'm never going to get back. <laughs> yeah, really poor showing. Yeah, I wouldn't watch that one again. Mm. Christ, there were times in that match where I was like, okay, so who's the legal person here? Hmm. Bad one, I can't even keep track of it. No, no, I remember one particular spot. There wasn't even a tag, and they just switched over, and the ref was just like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, tag, tag, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a tag there. That counts. Oh, boy. And here we go again. Yeah, things get a little bit worse. So the next match we're going to be discussing is the NXT Women's title match. Now, for me, the match the match was fine, 
but in a huge but before the match even started I was there going oh my god this is how it's going to end they're going to pull the BS on us yeah. once again as soon as you saw the two people sitting in the front row yeah. you were like oh great yeah so of course the cameras made the point of the other two UFC horsewomen were in attendance at ringside I was like great we're getting some BS ending right here and you weren't wrong no. Well, I'm trying to think. Then um, they were fighting on the floor, and she chucked Shayna Baszler into the crowd, and it yeah. hit both of them. Yeah, and then they jumped over the barrier. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, yeah, as I say, the match was fine, but yeah, it really winds me up when we have to have these BS ending. The matches. Yeah, this... was it. Was it Kyrie had Shayna in a submission hold? Yeah. And then she like pushed her up or whatever. And then, ironically, Mrs. Roderick Strong hit a hit a swinging kick to her head. I think yeah. it was. Yeah. And then and then and then she. And then Kyrie saying was stunned. And then she just flopped to the floor, and Shane just went, "Oh, okay." Yeah, she literally flopped into the the submission. Yeah. And then here's another thing. Apparently, we've got an even newer way of ending a match via submission. So you know, Kyrie saying was trying to fight it and all that, and then in the end, she ended up, you know, going all floppy and that. Then literally. The ref just grabbed a hand, gave it a little shake, and went, yeah, yeah, yeah she's out. End it. You know, well, they're not doing the three-arm thing anymore? Well, they're not even doing the one, <laughs> let alone the three. <sighs> so, there you go. we got to put up with this god-awful NXT Women's Champion. Again. And, unfortunately, she... She, uh goes on a slightly elite list now of two-time NXT champions. Who's the other one? There can't be many Not, not for women. Not not for the women's ah, belt, right. but just in general, because the era are two-time tag champs. The Joe is a two-time champ. Yeah, yeah, Joe knew. Evil Shinsky. Oh, may he, have been... I think he may have even had it three times. Mm. And... I want to say Kevin Owens. No, he, he no. only had it the once. And I think there might have been another <coughs> one on the tag. Po- possibly Jim Cornette's favour. Yes, unfortunately the Revival <laughs> won it twice. Mm. But, okay, I'm back onto the main show. Right. For me, personally, this was match of the night. Mm-hmm. Good call. Last women standing match. Becky Lynch defending the title against Charlotte. This is one of these rare occasions where I could honestly say I don't think I would get bored from, say, a three month rivalry no. with, with these. When it, as soon as it, you know, forget all the BS that they do on the telly, but when they get to the pay per views. My God! Yeah, man. They they were literally trying to kill one another in this match. There were some re- really good bits of this match. I mean, one of my favourite bits was pretty much right at the beginning where they were both tossing chairs in the ring. Mm. I mean, Christ, they're just tossing chairs, but it was just the hilariousness of mm. it. Oh, you're throwing a chair? I'll throw another chair. Mm. And it was just the ring was full of chairs. Almost like a old school ECW vibe. Yeah, but there was even an ECW chant. Mm. Now, if they book this, well, no, if they start booking this correctly, I think Becky Lynch could be a hell of a hill. She could, if they actually go through with it. Yeah, and and they're going to have to uh, mute out the crowd cheering for her. Well, the crowd won't cheer for her if they book her right. Mm. That's the problem. They're sort of doing this 
50-50 booking of her. Mm. And, of course, the crowd don't know what to do. So they're yeah. just cheering. Yeah. So, we had a couple of announcer tables broken oh, in this yeah. match. Well, no. A announcer's table and one or two normal tables from under the ring. Yeah. Of course, that spot with the leg drop off the ladder. Yeesh. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, they fought in the crowd. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really good match. You had the classic moment where Charlotte got buried under all, of, all the rubble. Mm. Yeah. I started to get worried when the match ended. Because I thought Charlotte was going to have like a Cena-esque moment. But no. The match comes to a pulsating end when uh, Charlotte had set up Becky on a table on the outside of the ring. She climbed to the turnbuckle. But Becky got up in time. Yeah. This is probably one of the only problems I had with this one. You had the whole moment where Charlotte emerged from the rubble, mm. battered her with the kendo stick, mm. speared her on the floor. Right. Put her on the table, was wailing on her, mm. and then Becky still got up to do the power bomb. Mm. It was like, okay, I can understand a desperation move, but you have just taken a fair bit of offense there. Yeah. Mm. So I imagine running on the adrenaline. And so yeah. 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 Becky got Charlotte down for the 10 count when she power bombed her. Off of the turnbuckle through the table mm. to the outside of the ring. Woof! Good match. How long was yeah. that? Nearly half hour. They went nearly half hour yeah. for a women's match. Well, of course, because we know what the main event was and they couldn't do half an hour. No. Mm. Well, no, just touching on that last man standing match moment, the, there's all a little callback to when Becky lost the SmackDown women's title mm. in that match. Mm. Because, you know, when Becky lost it, it was when Alexa powerbombed her through a table at the TLC uh, pay-per-view. Yeah. Uh, so it's from a clever tie-in, man. Uh, <coughs> for once, I'm actually doing a song clever. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's get this out of the way. Main event. Ronda Rousey versus Nikki Bella. Eesh. So, of course, Nikki had Brie with her. So you saw it right, okay. There's going to be some sort of shenanigans here. Mm. And the thing that made me laugh the most, throughout, throughout pretty much the majority of the match, like Michael Cole's there banging on about Bella, Bella Magic and that. Yeah. Yeah, one problem, Michael Cole. <laughs> they're about ten years older now, and one is blatantly much more different looking than the other. <laughs> yeah. In certain departments. Uh oh. Not to mention as well, they weren't even wearing the same matching outfits. No. <laughs> so you know, it's a bit easy to tell who's who, Mike. Yeah, right. Maggle. Maggle. <laughs> they can't do this twin magic BS anymore. No. So. Yeah. Yep. Although, it did wind me up a couple of times during this. When, like, Ronda was on the outside and chucking Nikki back into the ring and Brie getting a couple of cheap shots in, the ref was practically looking at him. He was. Both times. And it's all like, how do you put this over convincingly that the ref's missed it? Well, that, that was it. That, you had to believe he missed it. Oh I mean, I didn't dislike all of this match. There were parts of it I liked. Mm. It wasn't the worst women's match I've ever seen. No, no, no. No, that that will go to the six women's title match. <laughs> yeah, that's up Without there. Without a doubt. I mean, they, they did some good things. I liked in the beginning when Ronda was reversing her constantly. Yeah. And then just going, ah, oh, yeah, you, you don't belong in this era. <laughs> And like Nikki flipping off, going, "Oh, I can't, can't be there." Temper tantrums. And then when she did the um, Samoan drop, and she had both of them up there, I quite yeah, liked that part. That was a cool spot, yeah. But let's be honest, dear people. As soon as this match announced, you knew how it was ending. We knew how it was ending. 
And that's how it ended. Exactly. With the bent armbar. <laughs> the bent armbar? You know, an armbar, you've got them locked with the arm straight. Every time Rhonda does it, the arm's bloody bent like that. <laughs> Oh, 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 my God. oh, so painful. Uh. Yeah, she tapped out pretty quick. What? What? Easy, Mick. And there you go. That's that's how it ended. Mmm. That is evolution. And then everyone was on the stage, like the good friends they are. Going, mm. Yay, we did it. We did it, buddies. Girl power and all that shit. Oh. <laughs> and conveniently, I'm not sure if you noticed this, but one one of the pictures that they had from Evolution was like the two champs uh, celebrating with all the roster. Uh, but Evolution ended with just Ronda. Becky was nowhere to be seen. Yeah, yeah, I did notice that. And I'm trying to remember now because like Charlotte was right near the front and she was yeah. hugging. She was something. hugging Oscar. Yeah, that's right. Apparently they're all pally now. Yeah. Oh yeah, so, sorry for ending your undefeated streak and all that. <laughs> Nothing personal. <laughs> so, yeah, that was uh, that was evolution. Yeah, you know, not a bad pay per view. <laughs> no, no. I think it helped that most people were going in with low expectations on this. There was a couple of bits they can definitely work on, but mm. overall, not too bad. I think if they were to do it again next year, they'd make a hell of a lot better shot at it. Well, it depends if they're going over for the dirty Saudi money again. I don't think so. Not unless... Uh, not to mention half the roster refusing to go. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Right, so that's going to that wrap it up for this one. So, yeah. From your hosts, the master of the brain damage, Martin, and the one and only Sam H. We'll see you again for the next one. Cow power, yay!